David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another review. Today I have for you another office product, and that would be a desk. A standing desk, to be more specific, from a company by the name of Odin Lake. Now, you might recognize that name as being the company who produces a line of chairs, which I've reviewed a couple of months ago. They had provided a chair for review, and I used that chair at my work office. I liked it so much that I purchased a second chair in order to have one here at my home. Uh, in fact, that's what I am sitting in right now. Um, I could talk for quite a while about the things I enjoy about this chair. Uh, in fact, I did just that during the review. I'll put a link up here in the corner if you are in the market for a chair and would like to check that out. But today I am not here to talk about a chair, but a desk. The good folks at Odin Lake reached out to see if I would care to check out one of their standing desks. Now, a while back, I reviewed another standing desk from a company by the, call, by the name of uh, FlexiSpot. And I've been very pleased with that desk. It's of great quality. And uh, I've also reviewed some of FlexiSpot's chairs. Uh, while the chair was decent in comparison, I felt that the Odin Lake chair kind of blew it away. So I was curious to see if I would feel the same about the Odin Lake desk. And as luck would have it, another member of the Figboot household was looking to upgrade their work from home area, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to provide them with something nice, as well as provide a bit of a comparison between the two desks. Um, first of all, the desk I received uh, was the smallest that they currently offer, which is 47 inches by 24 inches. Uh, personally, I would have wanted something larger, but this desk wasn't for me. Uh, it arrived in two separate boxes, one for the tabletop and the other for the legs and everything else. The frame is available in both black and white, and the options for the tabletop are black, white, wood, or maple. Now, maybe they could have come up with a different name for wood, since maple is technically wood as well. Maybe they could have called it butcher block or something like that. Uh, as I mentioned, the desk arrives in two separate boxes, uh, one for the tabletop, one for everything else. I will say these boxes are very heavy. Uh, this is some heavy duty steel. Uh, the, uh, they were also very well protected with extra protection on the corners of each of the boxes. I've assembled enough of these types of desks that I have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. For this desk, it went together easily with the included Allen wrench, though I did end up using a drill to make things a little bit quicker. A couple of personal tips. Uh, when I assemble something like this, I always take the screws and bolts and put them into a bowl or a plastic container so they can be contained. Uh, it was also nice that they gave you some uh, extra parts in case there was anything missing from the bags or in case you accidentally lost something. Um, also, I don't take the tabletop completely out of the box. Uh, the top of the table is face down on the ground, and while you're putting things together, the top could get scratched as it moves across a hardwood floor, unless you have carpets or a softer surface to put that under. And here is what the finished desk looks like. Uh, it does have two holes for cords. Now, on other desks I've seen, these plugs simply like pop out, but on this desk, you actually need to twist them. Uh, but there's nothing indicating that on either the instructions or a visual clue on the piece. When pulling it out for the first time, I actually broke off one of the side pieces. It's not a big deal. The other is still there, but it was a bit of an odd design choice with a lack of end user guidance. I also wish the company offered something in the way of cable management. The power cables and the cables connecting both motors just kind of hang down. I need to come up with a solution on my own for that. When it comes to the raising and lowering of the desk, it can take a weight of up to 275 pounds. There are dual motors, one in each leg. Uh, it also has crash protection so that if you're lowering it and the top comes into contact with something, it'll automatically stop. I like how on the legs there is very little in the way of a gap between the pieces of steel. In regard to the keypad, there are three preset heights, and the rising and lowering action is very smooth and quiet. Now, when starting and stopping, there are no sudden movements or jerks, uh, but there is a beep that I could do without. When operating the pad, you click a button to essentially turn it on, and there's a beep. Then you need to click it a second time in order to get it to move. Uh, each of these clicks is accompanied by a loud beep. 
I'm not sure the audible clue is necessary. On my flexi spot desk, you just push the button a single time and it immediately moves. You don't need to activate it with a click and there is no beep. Um, I personally prefer that quieter option. Uh, the display has height numbers. Uh, the lowest number is 60 and the highest is 125. Uh, those numbers seemed a bit random until I figured out that it was the distance from the tabletop to the floor in centimeters. Uh, if you really don't use the metric system, you can just think of the numbers as representing desk height units. The desk is very sturdy when it's both in the lower and higher positions, which is important as well. Post-production David here. Uh, after living with this desk for a bit, I noticed something I wanted to add. Uh, the desktop here is not solid wood. It's a MDF with a veneer. And as you can see here in this close-up, that the surface is actually textured. Uh, now, in most situations, this really isn't an issue. But if you're trying to like write on a single piece of paper directly on the desk, then you can really feel that texture, and it can be a bit of a challenge. Okay, back to the review. The price for this specific size is $449. Uh, the larger sizes range up to $649. Uh, Odin Lake has provided me with a very nice discount code. If you enter DESK30 at checkout, you will receive 30% off of your purchase. For the desk I have, it took the price from $449 down to like $315, which isn't bad. Oh, and shipping is free, which is nice. The cost of shipping is always a concern, especially when it comes to large, heavy items like this. I will put a link to the Odin Lake site in the notes below. Uh, I mentioned the FlexiSpot desk up top. Now, that desk I have is larger and costs about twice as much, but in regard to the general features, they are fairly comparable. Uh, the biggest thing missing from the Odin Lake is uh, that some kind of cable management option, which I feel is a bit of an oversight. Uh, in the demonstration videos they have on their website, you can see they've secured the cables with cable ties. But again, I don't feel the first thing you need to do after assembling the desk is figure out a homemade solution for something. But overall, with a price of $315 after the discount, this is a pretty solid offering. And the family member who wanted the desk has already been getting good use out of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at something a little bit different. I will be back with regularly scheduled programming in a couple of days. Oh, and I will be attending the upcoming Atlanta Pen Show. So if you are going to be at that show, if you see me walking around, make sure to say hello. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.